So good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of identity and access management in digital transformation. OK, so I'm going to start my talk with a personal experience. So I have been doing internet banking for the past seven, eight years using a physical OTP token. And I lost it last month. And the bank told me they don't issue physical tokens anymore. And I have to use the mobile app to generate the OTP. So I already had the mobile app. Didn't use it, though. So I used it. The OTP doesn't work. So I am locked out of my mobile banking application. And I have lost all my faith in the mobile banking application. I have no way of doing banking other than going to the bank. So I have become a frustrated user. So the problems in the identity and access management system in the new mobile banking app has locked me out of my existing internet banking. So we can understand how important identity and access management in digital transformation efforts. Right? So it can mess up your existing identity and access management problems as well. So, um, so there are two keywords uh, in this talk, identity and access management and digital transformation. Let me just quickly run through them. So according to Gartner, identity and access management is giving right individuals access to right resources at right time for right reasons. And there are several uh, main branches in identity and access management. Authentication, authorization, identity federation. So that stands for single sign-on, single logout, and attribute federation uh, among different systems. Uh, provisioning. So provisioning stands for uh, you can provision accounts into the IDP. You can provision accounts into the external applications. So provisioning accounts into diff different systems is another responsibility of IA identity and access management system. So next comes account management. So that's simple, user role group management. And identity governance ensures that the system is compliant with existing regulations and uh, legislations. OK, so uh, digital transformation. I'm not going to talk much about it because we have been talking about it. But I like to use this analogy. So this is uh, a Jacobian traveling library. So you can find it. It's date, it dates back to 1617. And you can find it in the British Library. So it has miniature versions of 50 famous books. And you can take it around when you travel, within a case. It's the old version of the Kindle, right? So I like to think digital transformation in the same way. So you make business different through technology. So um, when it comes to the importance, so we, we are going to talk about the importance of identity and access management. And we'll discuss about the importance in these three broad areas. So we are, we'll be taking customer-focused digital transformation and talk about identity and access management in such operations. And we'll take operational process uh, digital transformation and talk about characteristics, challenges of identity and access management in this area. And of course, uh, when it comes to business models, we will also look at um, some characteristics for identity and access management. So, um, so we'll uh, first move to uh, understanding the challenges and finding solutions to customer-focused uh, uh, identity and access management, right? So any customer-focused digital transformation effort require a well-designed customer identity and access management program. So these are some of the challenges that we find our customers facing. So first one. Uh, when it comes to customer-focused digital transformation, customers self-sign up through, through web application or mobile application. So we have to make this registration process extremely easy. We spend hours talking with customers about how to make 
customer experience, their customer experience better, right? So when you are designing the IAM system, you have to pay attention to this aspect. So if the customer IAM system is cumbersome, your customers will move to competitors, right? So it's critical you make the identity and access management as simple as possible, but not uh, without compromising security. So some of the tricks you can use are social logins, mobile connect, Google recapture. Right, so the, your choice of identity and access management system should support all of these. So usually customer data we store um, are personal. So there are a lot of rules and regulations prevailing this data. It's, so security of this data is directly a direct responsibility of the IAM system that we deploy. So if we take GDPR, which is a hot topic these days, we'll be, talk, we'll be having a session tomorrow, no, day after tomorrow, is one such standard. So your IAM system should be able to comply with these standards. And if you are working in financial uh, 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 sector, SOX is such a standard, GPLA is such a standard. So we have to, you have to make sure the IAM program is compliant to these standards. And so if this personal data is exposed due to a security breach, of course the company will suffer a lot of loss, a lot of damages. For example, last couple of years, a series of breaches exposed uh, personal data of Yahoo users, which resulted in about $350 million loss to Yahoo. So it's essential that you make sure the security of data, security of personal data uh, is ensured. So, and the next one is scalability. So, a workforce, um, workforce facing uh, identity and access program that is facing workforce might only scale up to tens or hundreds or thousands. If your workforce is in thousands, it will maximally be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 users. But if your business becomes very um, popular, it might, your Customer IAM program will should scale up to millions. So when you are picking an IAM system, you should pay uh, very careful consideration to this aspect. How much load can it handle? How many authentication requests can it serve? Or is it scalable? Can it be active active? Can it operate on active active mode? Can it operate on active passive mode? And so on. Can it run on multiple data centers? Can I scale it across geographies? Okay, so let's look at some of the solutions that we have provided to our customers. So, um, so most of our WSO2 identity server deployments are done for customer facing identity and access management programs. So I have picked three such patterns three such solutions that are widely used. So the first problem of easy registration using existing data. This uh, solution was done for a multinational life insurance provider in USA. So they wanted to provide easy online registration to their clients. So insurance agents went from door to door selling uh, insurance policies. They entered customers' data it was already available in the CRM system. But when the customer wanted to pay the premium, they had to register online. So the idea was the customer should be able to register by giving minimal set of data, policy ID, phone number, and so on. When this data is given, the customer's profile is automatically populated by pulling data from the CRM system. So um, this is the solution that we gave. So there's a registration module in the web application, which calls WSO2 Identity Server. 
So WS2, using WSO2 identity server has the added advantage of it manages accounts. It ensures pa passwords are hashed, salted, and stored properly. You can expire passwords. All of those additional benefits are coming because account management, I, uh, identity federation, if you require that, single sign-on capabilities, everything is packaged with WS2 identity server. You can concentrate on the functionality of the web server. So here, identity server uh, calls the CRM system and pulls the data and automatically populate the profile, customer profile. So this is not just done for this multinational insurance provider. It's done for several other customers. Uh, the backend system is sometimes uh, on-premise CRM, sometimes Salesforce. And so this is a very common pattern that we see. So this allows you to make the onboarding process super easy. Okay, the next solution, social logins. So uh, this is uh, a solution that we gave to a multinational energy provider in Europe, right? They wanted to uh, allow Facebook logins to their website. So logins and registrations both. So when a when user first visits the website, you have to register. You can register using Facebook. They authenticate with Facebook, and then provide additional detail and register with the energy provider. After that, they can pay bills uh, and look at uh, the usages online. So when doing uh, a common pattern is when doing transactions, so there are some, some there's a fear of using social identities, social logins uh, to your website, especially if it is involved, if it involves credit transactions, if you are doing a payment, if it is an online bookstore. So one uh, good, uh, one um, additional security measure that you can take is introducing multi-factor authentication or asking the user to enter a secondary uh, creden internal credential when doing the payment. So these are some of the patterns that we have seen. So here is the solution that we, uh, that's given. That's a login module, uh, and uh, it, it sends an authentication request to WSO2 identity server, and according to the client's customer's preference, he'll be either directed to Facebook or Google or any other public IDP to be authenticated, right? The advantage here is you develop the login module once only, you don't change the login module again. You simply send a SAML or OpenID authentication request or HTTP basic authentication request. And simply by configuration, you can keep on adding uh, public identity providers. So you can add Twitter if it's required. You can add other public identity providers. So you have minimal changes on the web server other than showing the logo. And so uh, this is one pattern. So uh, the third uh, one uh, I picked was the Mobile Connect platform that we have deployed in India. So this Mobile Connect platform provides, so Mobile Connect is quite popular in Europe, Asia and Southeast Asia, but not so much in USA. But uh, in India, all of the six top mobile network operators are hooked up to this platform. So Mobile Connect is potentially available for 800 million users across India. But we right, only have, right now we only have 20 million active users in the system. So what this allows is for uh, Indian people, in users, consumers in India is to log into applications using Mobile Connect. So the app developer uh, has, don't have to worry about authenticating users, storing credentials, um, and, it's, and 
Consumers don't have to worry about remembering the password. You simply uh, log in to the application using mo the mobile phone. It can be SS, it can be a USSD code, it can be an SMS, uh, or it can be a SIM applet. So this is the platform that we have given. Uh, there's a uh, service provider. It discovers the MNO, mobile network operator, from the API exchange. And the authentication uh, access, access token, request for access token is sent for WSO2 identity server. OK, so this uh, mobile connect uh, protocol is built on top of OpenID. So you get consumer key and consumer secret, and you exchange it for an access token. At WSO2 identity server, this is deployed at the mobile uh, MNO, mobile network operator. Uh, so WSO2 identity server requests users to authenticate using USSD or SMS or SIM applet, right? Once the users authenticate, they automatically sign in to the application. They don't have to enter password. So as long as you have the mobile phone at your hand, you can say OK, and you are into the application. So there are 20 million users uh, using this platform right now. So um, if we take um, uh, the, all of these stories, you can see that the quality of the customer IAM system, customer IAM program, has a huge impact uh, for customer-focused digital transformation. So it reduces the entry barrier by making user registration really easy. For example, multiple studies have shown that when, um, when you integrate with social logins, the success of user registration improves largely. Right? So there are multiple studies to prove these facts. So uh, it's important that you, your CIAM program considers these facts. And of course, uh, uh, quality uh, of your CIAM program determines the security of the personal data, security of your personal data of your customers, compliance, and monitoring. And of course, if the customer IAM program generates analytics, you, can, you begin to see new business models. You will see customers logging at this time of the day, so I might uh, use a lot of advertising at that time, or so on. So, and of course, it allows, to, uh, it allows you to address technical challenges such as awesome UX, because without it, you'll be used, losing to competitors and scalability. OK, so the next topic. So when it comes to digitally transforming processes, here, the digital transformation is facing inwards. It's for the employees of the company. So these are some of the example scenarios. You could be automating processes. You could be moving from paper-based uh, system to an application. For example, uh, instead, of, instead of a payslip, uh, payslip based on paper, you could be providing an application to download the payslip. So that's inward-facing digital transformation. So all of these uh, internal processes need uh, employee identity and access management system. Why? Because if you have a properly designed, optimized employee and identity and access management system, it will reduce the risk and the cost of account provisioning. So imagine uh, one of your employees leave and you forgot to delete his account in one of the systems and he can still access it, right? So there's a huge risk associated with um, ad hoc employee identity management and a cost because each time uh, the employee job role changes, you have to make sure he has correct access rights in correct applications. It can't be that when I uh, open the application today, I see a different set of options. When I open it tomorrow, I'll see a different set of options. It has to be properly managed, right? 
So, so if you take all of these uh, uh, internally fo focused uh, digital transformation efforts and the identity and access management system associated with it, there are some characteristics. So there are like almost always in order to ensure the success, we have to make sure the IAM system integrates with your user credential store. Because most of the uh, enterprises today has Active Directory or LDAP. So at least part of the department has a, one department has an Active Directory, another department has a database, another department doesn't have anything at all. So you have to make sure there's a, there's a unified identity layer in order to reduce uh, the cost and the risk and increase the success of your identity and access management program. So you can ensure uh, that um, it is widely used. So the other thing is the, the biggest challenge when it comes to employee IAM program is that uh, there are federation silos. Some applications might use SAML. Some applications might use OAuth. Some applications might be on-premise. Some applications might be in the cloud. Some applications can be SaaS. So there are a lot of different applications. And you have to ensure there is a unified or well-managed, optimized access to all of these applications for employees. So that is the biggest challenge in employee uh, identity and access management programs. So if you take uh, ac another, next one is acquis acquisitions, mergers, and partnerships. So if you take uh, in 2013, uh, on, in the first nine months alone only, there were 862 million acquisitions happening in USA only. There are many businesses today that grows by acquiring other businesses, by partnerships. So there are identity uh, or user stores or employee credential stores lying around everywhere, right? Part at partners, they might be using a different system. The main branch could be using some other system. So that is another challenge when it comes to uh, launching internally focused digital transformation. So you have to make sure that your program is successful across all of these different layers. So another thing is bring your own device. So there's EMM solutions out there. We also have uh, EMM. So you have to ensure that EMM solution tightly or integrates with identity and access management program. Okay. So um, I'm going to again, uh, like before, Going, I'm, I'm going to take three solutions that we have provided. I'm going to walk you through them. So, so the, this one is an identity broker. It's a solution that we give, uh, gave for a university in USA. Let's call it FU. So the FU University uh, had an identity and access management program. But the problem was they had so many applications. They have on-prem applications cloud applications, some applications use Kerberos, some applications had uh, Shibboleth. So different identity providers, huge, uh, the, uh, very heterogeneous application portfolio. There were identities scattered around at different user stores. People had to remember multiple passwords. So the challenges that we discussed before was visible in this deployment. Right? There were multiple identity federation silos. And what they wanted was automatic provisioning and easy management of identities. Usually, in an employee identity and access management program, the expectation is, at the, at the most optimized level, the expectation is you create the HR record, the user is automatically provisioned, to the correct applications with correct access control levels. And when the user change, when the employee changes uh, his job roles, uh, they will, uh, the 
it automatically should change the HR record changes, the access, con access control changes. And when the employee leaves, he has to, um, the, everything should be wiped off. So this is the solution we gave. In identity server uh, is actually an identity bus. It can generate authentic, outgoing authentication requests to any of the incoming authentication requests. For example, we can take SAML, incoming SAML authentication request and generate outgoing auth, auth request, KBROS request. So LDAP authentication, all of these are possible. So we, we came up with a solution that authenticated users uh, seamlessly to cloud applications, on-premise applications, over heterogeneous protocols. So when the user is a single sign-on to WS2 Identity Server via one service provider, he didn't have to log into any other application. He will be automatically logged into SaaS applications and all of the on-prem applications. It was seamless to the employee. Okay, so this is another um, scenario uh, that uh, another solution that we gave. So I'm going to skip this couple of slides because I'm going to run out of time. So this is, this is another solution. So, okay, so this brings us to um, identity management maturity levels defined by Forrester. What we see are uh, that most customers, when they come to us, they are at this level. There is, uh, there is an identity and access management program. It's int intuitive, not documented, but occurs when necessary. And they want to reach here. So most of the programs that we have designed, we have helped them to come from here to here, to the optimized level when the HR record is created, the user is automatically provisioned. Okay, so the quality of your employee identity access management program determines, so reduce the risk and cost of provisioning employee accounts. It increases productivity, security, governance, compliance, monitoring, and visibility, which leads to innovation and reduce risk. Okay, so it also uh, ensures that you can, uh, the, if you have the identity bus capabilities, it's really easy to penetrate into federation silos because it can federate between different identity protocols, on-prem and cloud applications, right? So when it comes to new business models, so we don't know what it is because because it's a new business model. This is, this, for example, Apple selling music or iTunes. So the identity and access management program can be traditional or can be drastically different. The requirement is that your IAM system should be extensible, right? So um, the conclusion of the talk is that the quality of your IAM system is directly proportional to the success of your digital transformation efforts. I hope um, so that's it. Thank you. And any questions? Okay. Yes, so WSO2 identity server supports multi-tenancy. So, uh, so if you have uh, B2B multi-tenancy, that's usually a partner system, right? Uh, so one of the things that I didn't cover had that use case. So this is, uh, uh, so in this case, what we did was we created a tenant for partner. There's a tenant per partner and the every every partner had an administrator user management administrator that is provisioned by the partner manager so he manages the staff turnover rate staff turnover 
at the partner. So when employees leave, he deletes the account. When employees join, he adds the account. So this is one of those scenarios. In the first uh, scenario that uh, you had with the insurance uh, company, um, you mentioned that uh, uh, you are pulling the attributes from uh, uh, Salesforce, Salesforce account from the CRM. This is, uh, you did it with uh, a building uh, uh, function of uh, identity server or it's something that you created for the specific uh, case? So it's, uh, it's an extension point. It's a custom uh, handler using an extension point. You're saying what you had before with the um, separate businesses logging into the tenant and managing the estate within that. Is there any way for you to trust the identity uh, provider of another business? So as they start, as they manage their staff and move levers process internally, yours magically trusts that identity issued by the other partner? Yes, we can. So we can configure external identity providers as uh, two identity server. So that is identity bus capability. So authentication request, incoming authentication request. When, auth when, when there's an authentication request, we can select based on the configuration to which identity provider we should forward it to. And if there's protocol transformation, we can do that. If there, and generate an outgoing authentication request get the response and send it back. So if you have an identity provider at the um, partner, uh, and if there's an application, we can direct it to the partner, and a partner IDP, and get it authenticated. Okay. Okay, thanks, Nimoto.